having faith in God is to agree with God and not to argue with God. Which means you then go into believing the promises of God in the Bible. If he says, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers, you believe and you agree with God. I agree with you. That is faith. Because Rahab just had to agree with God. God said he will give them the land. And Rahab agreed, I concur, that God will take this land. Jericho will be conquered and I believe so now i trust this god so you should look at your life again have you been agreeing with god or have you been arguing with god hi welcome and welcome back to my youtube channel it is such a pleasure to have you watch today's video i am excited about today's video because i learned something from rahab the prostitute which is why i titled today's video the prostitute's faith these two words prostitute and faith they don't have similarity they are non-symmetrical why did the bible keep using Rahab the prostitute. Even in the New Testament, every place Rahab is mentioned, why did you keep using Rahab the prostitute? It is not insignificant. In Hebrews 11 31, it says, It was by faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. It is God just saying, I like people when they are honest, when they are like they are, when they are not faking and pretentious. That's what I started getting. And I realized that even in the New Testament, when Jesus was walking on earth, the people that Jesus was healing were not saved. This led me to a place of realizing that faith is not about perfection. Faith is about believing God. God knows who we are. God knows none of us is perfect. That is why God gave his son Jesus to come die for us so that all of us would come to a place of salvation through him. I've come to learn from Rahab the prostitute. Because even the children of Israel did not believe in the promise of God when they wanted to go and take over the land of Jericho. They did not believe they could do it. Of course, you know the story if you read the Bible in the book of Numbers when they said that the people in that land are giants, that they cannot go there, that they will die. When the 10 spies brought up those stories to them. Of course, they have a fortified city. They have armies. But Rahab being on the other side of the wall knew that their people were afraid of Israel. Not because of Israel, but because of the God of Israel. Now, I will read here in Joshua chapter 2 verse 9 for you to see what Rahab said. I know the Lord has given you this land. She told them, we are all afraid of you. Everyone in the land is living in terror. This is the testimony of Rahab, a citizen of Jericho. Though she was well known for her profession. But then she's giving them this story and know that my people are terrified of you guys. Why? Because for we have heard how the Lord made a dry path for you through the Red Sea when you left Egypt. And I will jump to verse 11. No wonder our hearts have melted in fear. No one has the courage to fight after hearing such things. For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. Wow. She really believes God. It's a wonder to me that the Israelites did not believe God with this kind of conviction. It was the enemy that were outside that believed God. Could it be that even in our lives that our God is so great and people are seeing the evidence of God in our lives, but we are on this other side as if God is not doing anything for us. We are on this other side as if we don't even know the greatness of the power of our God. Why? Because we have not come to a place of conviction and agreeing that faith is about believing that God is who he says he is and he can do what he says he can do. Rahab believed that God is that powerful. Do you? That is one of the things to learn about the faith of that prostitute, Rahab. She believed God can do what he says he would do. Check God's history with Israel. Check God's history with your life. Let's not go far from your birth to where you are right now. Would you survive till this age, if not for the faithfulness of God? Have you done everything perfectly for God to keep you? But your enemy knows God better than you do. Because they are afraid of you because of your God, not because of you. They couldn't take you down. They have tried you. They couldn't take you down because your God has protected you. But you do not know because you thought that until you had entered into a ghastly motor accident and God saved you and you came out alive, that's when you would have a testimony to say, oh, I have a testimony. I entered into an accident and God saved me. You don't need that testimony. You being alive, you are the testimony. You are the miracle. God gave me that revelation some time ago that I am the miracle. I don't need to wait till something bad happens to me before I realize that God is faithful to me. For me to keep on living every day, I go out every day and come back safe, I am the miracle. 
I have a testimony to give of the faithfulness of God because there are so many things that God has done for me that I do not even know, that I cannot even tell, that it cannot be described because I've not seen it. So that should make me grateful. It's not just normal to say, oh, oh, isn't everybody's going out and coming in now. It is the mercy and the faithfulness of God and the favor of God that is keeping us, the provision and everything. Rehab here then went to a place of saying, I believe in your God, made a deal with the two spies that she preserved. And scripture that we read in Hebrew says, by her faith, she was kind to the two spies because let's even be real, Rahab would have sold out those spies to the king. It was reported to the king of Jericho that Israel had sent two spies and those spies entered the house of Rahab, which was the best place to enter because she's a prostitute. She entertains men. So it would not be suspected. So when the king asked her, where are those men provide them? She hid them and then told the king, definitely the men were here, but they had already left and she protected them. That was faith for her to do that. And that was her not being patriotic to her own country but then trusting god she said now swear to me by the lord that you will be kind to me and my family since i have helped you that's what she said to the spies give me some guarantee that when jericho is conquered wow this is the point that got me she believed that jericho will be conquered this is a citizen of jericho knowing that god will do what he said he would do and she entered into this negotiation for herself and her family and that was why when jericho was conquered by the lord joshua told the two spies keep to your promise now these are the lessons i've come to learn about her faith that having faith in god is to agree with god and not to argue with god sometimes you want to argue with god sometimes you want to almost like Tell God that we know what should happen in our lives. That we know how God should work in our life. That we know how things should turn out in our life. That we know how God should do things or relate with us. But it's to say, God, I want to be in a place that I trust your promises. Which means you then go into believing the promises of God in the Bible. If he says, I wish that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. You believe and you agree with God. I agree with you. If he says, by his stripes we were all healed, which is by the stripes of Jesus, we are all healed. You believe and you agree with God. God, I agree with you. That is faith. Because Rahab just had to agree with God. God said he will give them the land. And Rahab agreed, I concur, that God will take this land. Jericho will be conquered. And I believe. So now I trust this God because I've seen him work. I've seen, I've heard about the history of God. I've not been a part of it we up talking but i've heard about the history and we are perplexed at the mighty hand of god so you should look at your life again have you been agreeing with god or have you been arguing with god you have to come to a place of knowing that you will not understand everything god wants to do in your life because having faith in god does not even make sense and that is why scripture says that for all of god's promises have been fulfilled in christ with a resounding yes and through Christ, our Amen, which means, yes, ascends to God for his glory. This is just to say that when God says, I will bless you, you said, you answer, I am blessed. When God says, you are healed, you answer, I agree, I concur. Amen. That's why we say amen in prayers. That's why we say amen when we make declarations of blessing. Amen. It is saying, I agree, I agree, I concur. Concur with God for your life. For the victory that he has given you for the good things he is doing in your life and the good things he is going to do concur with god and lastly the last lesson that i would just say here is faith is about you participating with god rahab had faith and that's why james said rahab the prostitute is another example she was shown to be right with god by her actions when she hid those messengers and sent them safely away by a different road her action then portrayed the faith she had it would have been easy for her to say, I believe that Jericho will be destroyed and all of that. But because of fear, she would have said, oh, guys, I cannot hide you guys. The king is asking for you guys. I don't want to put my life on the line. If they get to discover that I was lying, you guys have to come out. <laughs> it would have been easy to even get to that place. But then she hid them and believed. So faith is about participating with God. That is promise will come to pass. If God gives you a command on what to do, 
for his promise to come to pass, you have to follow through. For the walls of Jericho to fall, God gave them a command and they obeyed. Joshua obeyed that command. And for every war that Joshua went into, God would give Joshua a command and Joshua obeyed according as God said. So which means when God gives you a command, even for your life, do not turn to the left or to the right. Just concur with the command of God because that's how you participate. If God tells you move like Abraham, it wouldn't even make sense. And Abraham moved without knowing where he was going. If God tells you, just trust me, trust him. If God tells you, open up that channel and create a video, do it. If God tells you, make that application, make it. Whatever God tells you, just obey. That is your participation. And knowing that when you agree with God, you have to participate with God. Those are the lessons I've learned from the life of Rahab, the prostitute. So let this story about Rahab, you can study more. And then I believe God can give you more revelation on it. But you can see that. Having faith in God is not about your performance to deserve being before God before you can ask. It's not about how perfect you are before you can ask God. It is just about you agreeing with God. Whatever God says, just say amen to it. Amen. Thank you for watching today's video. And I would like to see you in my next video. Hit that like button and subscribe to this channel if you are yet to. God bless you.